Hey guys, Awesome Specs 21 here, your destination for speculation, and today do I have another theory for you. I know I've been a little spacious in my content lately, but that's only because the schoolwork is finally catching up to me, but I caught a break today, so uh, let's do a theory about Phineas and Ferb. Now this theory, it has not been confirmed yet, and I don't think it will at all because the series is um, so far over. But, we can still speculate about it. So I'm going to speculate if Doofensmirtz is actually Phineas and Candace's father. Their biological father. You may call me crazy now, but just wait till the end of the video. You'll see what I'm talking about. So I'm trying a couple different new things to make my videos more interesting, and I've decided to try to add a proof counter. Now proofs are like little hints of the theory and leads me closer to my actual goal. In this case, the goal is to prove that Doofensmirtz is the biological father of Phineas and Candace. Now if I can't do it and I get under five, then it will not be true. If I get five to eight, then it's plausible. And if I get four to, f I mean, sorry, 10 to 14, it's most likely true. But if I get over 15, or 15 or over, it's definitely true. So that's how the proof counter works, and I hope you guys see it and like it. And also, I need to feel, I feel the need to point out that Ferb does not relate to this theory in any way, shape, or form because he's married into the family. So all you Ferb Nessa shippers, your ship is safe. Now look, I'm a mind reader, so I can read your minds even through the screen. You're saying, hey, Doofensmirtz can't be their biological father. They don't have the same last name as Phineas and Candace do. But you have to remember that in the 80s, their mom, Linda, was a pop star, a one-hit wonder pop star called Lindana. And, and when you're famous, you usually keep your last name, whoever you marry, regardless of gender. So that explains the last name thing. I would say that's that. <laughs> you guys know me better than that. Of course I have more evidence to back this theory up, so just hang on a second. Also, way before Phineas and Candace were even born, Linda knew Doofensmirtz, and they even went on a date in a drive-in movie together. I can't remember what episode this was, but you guys probably remember, so... The point I'm trying to make is, they do know each other in real life, and most likely, they're still in touch. I'm still in touch with all my ex-boyfriends, too. But enough about my personal life. Anyway, you might want to take into account that both Doofenshmirtz and Phineas have similar shaped heads. And, I mean, their mom is perfectly normal, so where would the head thing come from? My guess, it would be Dr. Doofenshmirtz. You also have to take into account that Candace has a really long neck. And so does Doofenshmirtz. And both Doofensmirtz and Phineas seem to be very good builders because Doofensmirtz builds innators that actually work, that can do just about anything in the world. And then you have Phineas and Ferb who build just about everything, anything that they want during the summer. Also, where do they get the money to build that? Hmm. I don't think it's their parents because... Their mom obviously does not have a job, because she's never mentioned in going to work or anything, and she's always running to the store or places to go. So, and their dad owns an antique store, which I don't think there's a lot of money of that in that. If there is, I'm sorry. But that means that they must be getting what Dr. Doofensmirtz gets to build his innators which is probably only half as much as the Fletchers are getting. Because they probably get alimony checks from both Ferb's, eh, from both Ferb's mom and Phineas's dad, meaning Dr. Doofensmirtz. 
Hmm. Because I bet you that's where it comes from. And if that's not enough to convince you, take a look at this clip. Hi, Phineas. What you doing? Well, you know how you said you'd never seen a rainbow in real life? Well, actually, I... Behold! The rainbow Rainbowinator! Well, that's nice, Phineas, but I... Made with real crystals and supercharged with three rainbow flakes. You don't understand, I... Soon, there will be a giant rainbow that will sprawl across the entire tri-state area! Or at least, that's the plan, anyway. Do you need any more proof than that? You do? Okay, here we go. Okay guys, have you noticed that every single invention that the boys make, every single one, the boys never get hit with the ray, but the invention does. Maybe Dr. Doofenshmirtz builds them that way so that the boys and Candace never get hit with the ray. Or their, or his innator, sorry, not ray, his innator. But I can't really add a add a proof to this one because um, the because it's not proven that he does so. And remember earlier when I mentioned the whole like last name kind of thing, and I said that Flynn was Linda's original last name. Well, here's pr further proof of that. The grandparents that we've seen in multiple episodes actually do have the last name Flynn. Because as you can see right here, Grandpa Clyde Flynn and Grandma Betty Jo Flynn, you skip over a little, are Linda's parents. Yep. That's another point on the proof counter. Okay, this one might take a bit of explaining, so stay with me, guys. So, we have seen Phineas, Ferb, and also Candace go over to the Doofensmirtz Evil Incorporated before and actually talk and interact with Doofensmirtz and some of their innators and stuff. And the reason Doofensmirtz doesn't remember is because he built the Amnesia Innator in order to forget his in order to forget about Linda and the two kids that they had together. This is basically a theory within a theory, but I'm gonna add a proof anyway, because it seems like the most logical explanation. And finally, it seems like the OWCA knows more than they're letting on, especially about Doofenshmirtz. I mean, why would you even assign an agent to him unless he was truly evil? And the best one to figure this out would be the only other person, or should I say platypus, that actually knows about the secret. Yep, that's right. Perry has known this whole time. Yet he can't really say anything, so... Go figure, I guess. Alright, so that's all I have to say about this theory, so let's tally up the results. The proof counter total was 10, so our conclusion must be that this theory is most likely true. If you want to go back, I'm not going to go over all of the evidence, but if you want to go back and see it all again, you are welcome to hit the replay button at the end of the video. And if there was anything I missed and you want to let me know, be sure to leave a comment down below, or if you have any other theories that you would like me to do, just let me know, and also let me know what you guys think of the proof counter, because this is the first time I've ever done it. So, I really want to know what you guys think about that, and if you guys like it, I'll do it more often. And also, don't forget to like and subscribe. This is Awesome Specs 21 signing off.